my adulthood. So it was also trying to figure out where am I right. in this body, which women especially go through anyways, as soon as they yep. hit that past adolescence, it's like, what's happening? You know? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Just about to say that. I was just thinking that like, it's enough to just go through life in general, but then you have all of these extreme, just things happening to you all at once, which is why your story is so beautiful and you're so resilient from there you had this unhealthy relationship with food for how many years? And then you sort of hit that point where things had to change and you discovered this new healing process with the brain. Like, tell us about that. Yeah. And what was hard is I had like, I had both ends. So during my illness, I knew food was crucial to my immune system, right? So food either helped my immune system and helped me survive or took away from my immune system. So at the same time, I loved food, but at the, but also it was my enemy because I couldn't eat all the foods my friends were, right? And it was like, they could eat pizza and be fine. I ate pizza and, or chocolate or brownies, and now my immune system can't fight as strong. So, mm -hmm. you know, then again, food's the enemy for me, right? Why can't I be normal, mm -hmm. right? So I had this conflict. So then when I survived it, I was like, okay, I know food is amazing, but I'm gaining weight now and I'm eating healthy. So it's a conflict again, right? right? So it was weird because I had both thought processes existing at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, but really, so that would be, I would say from age 13 to when it started to probably about 24. Um, and I it really happened one night. I, had I just it, I was like enough we all have it right I'm just gonna eat you know and go get everything and it's really gross like I think we've all had those just gluttony gross like you're not even eating anymore because you want to right you right. just can't and right. I was I could not sleep my body I was like sweating um and I was so sick and it was like, my body was screaming like, this is, I can't deal with this food, you know? And I was sweating and I felt so sick and I'm like, okay, enough. Like that was probably one of my lowest points where I was like, I understand food feels like the enemy, mm -hmm. um, but you also know it's a healer and you also know things take time. So you have got to let go of the conflict with food being the enemy, knowing your body's been through some real serious stuff. It's going to take a little bit of time to unwire, you know, unwind all this. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's when I started to more let go of this food being the enemy and start embracing it as one of my like greatest blessings to help my body heal but then I had that starvation and that's where I started to really, you know, also look into the brain because I knew some of that connection had been rewired, you know, to a bad place. And I had to start also addressing it from that standpoint, but it was probably then, yeah, a good 11 years of just this constant inner turmoil with food. Yeah. Which I know not as that a severe of case, but like almost every human being can relate to every know? single person. Oh yeah. yeah. I was just thinking of when you had described the moment where you're like, it's on, I'm going to devour all this food and I don't care. Uh, you know, like every person can relate to that. I was thinking in my head, the turmoil, just the inner turmoil, do you think was half of the stress or even all of the stress on your body of just those conflicting things that were going on in your head where you're like, you lost hope, you stopped caring, you hated your body, all of those, that negative, that negative load and that toxic negative load. Do you think that was a massive contributor to blocking you from moving forward? I think it absolutely inhibited expediting the process mm -hmm. of healing, right? Because I had the physical factors, obviously. Um, but my body's trying to overcome all of this and I'm feeding 
these conflicting emotions all the time. And the more you understand the brain and we all understand, I mean, we are what we think about, but the brain truly gets wired. These thoughts, these emotions get wired into the neural networks of the brain. And now that's how your brain thinks and operates. So literally, I mean, and they've proven this scientifically, if you think food's the enemy, mm-hmm. the brain's going to think it's the enemy, mm-hmm. which creates a threat response which creates fight or flight in the body, which creates the stress and the cortisol and your body holding on to food and the hormone imbalances, right? And so, and since we eat every single day, like that's not going away, if that's become a stressful thing, whether or not you're eating salmon or you're eating a hamburger, it's still stressful, right? Because you're thinking either about what you're not having or what you are having, what you ate, what you didn't eat. That's going to create this tumultuous cycle in your body, which is also why people struggle to lose the weight or get healthier too, because literally how the brain and body are functioning and perceiving food is not helping and it's become a threat. We never grew up understanding the power of our thoughts and our emotions as kids. Like there's definitely way more information out there now, but we're still just, just, I think, tip of the iceberg for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's why I love what you have to bring because there's so much, when you start to understand the gut brain connection and and rewiring the mind, there's so much uh, hope that you're going to give people. 